Hey everyone, it is Josh here with HostGator. Today I'm going to show you cPanel's File Manager, one of the easiest ways to manage your content inside your server. It's extremely useful, really easy to use, and I'm excited to show it to you today. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is start out here inside of our cPanel. I'm going to hover over the File Manager icon and click there. Now before we get started on all the fun stuff you can do inside of File Manager, I want to show you where you actually are. So if you look over here on the left hand side, you can see that we are in home 2 slash B pit. This is my cPanel's home directory. It's where all of my content inside of my server is stored. And every time you open up File Manager, this is exactly where it's going to take you. On the left hand side over here, you can see that we have a lot of folders that we can navigate through. If you're used to File Explorer inside your Windows desktop, or if you've ever used an FTP client, this will seem really familiar. It's a quick way to navigate around your system just by clicking on a simple folder. So let's say that I want to navigate to one of the folders that I have here. This first one is backups. If I just click there, you can see in the middle, it takes me directly to that folder. You can also look and see what's inside of every folder by clicking the plus sign here, clicking the minus to close it back up. But that's a really fast way to navigate back and forth to different folders inside of your server. If I click on the home up here, it's going to take me right back to my home directory. Now there's a lot of stuff inside of your cPanel's file manager, and I'll show you a few of those key folders right now. If we look here, we can see Etsy and Mail. Those are two directories that work specifically to handle my incoming and outgoing mail inside of the server. The public HTML folder here is where all the content is stored for your primary domain, and you'll see different folders for each of the add-on domains or subdomains that you have inside of your system as well. Now there's going to be a lot of content in here, and it's always good to not delete things, but I do want to show you one of the coolest things about File Manager if you accidentally delete something. Let's say that I accidentally remove my public HTML, and I'll show you how to delete files and folders really quickly here. So let's say I click over public HTML, and then I click delete. You're always going to be prompted by File Manager to ask if you're absolutely sure that you want to delete the files. It's going to give you the option to skip the trash can and permanently delete it, and I'll show you why I never click that button. Let's click Confirm to delete my entire public HTML. And now it's completely gone. All the content from my primary domain has effectively been deleted, but I want to show you one of the best parts about File Manager is the trash can. Now before we actually get to the trash can, I want to talk to you a little bit about dot .files or hidden files inside the system. A dot .file is essentially hidden inside of Linux by prefacing the entire name of the folder or file with a dot in front of it. By default, these are hidden inside of File Manager as well, but I'm going to show you how you can see them. Let's go up here to the right hand corner, click on Settings. And we'll click on show hidden files dot files. Once we click save, we can see a lot of files and folders appear with dots in front of them. So we've got our dot security here. Here's my dot trash that I'll show you about in just a few seconds. If we scroll down, we can see a lot of files as well. We've got our dot ht access, which is one of the most important files in terms of Apache. But let's scroll back up and let's look inside the dot trash folder. There's that public HTML that I deleted earlier. If I want to restore it, it's really simple. All we do is click the folder, click up here on restore. Click yes when prompted to restore the files. And now my public HTML is back exactly where I left it before I deleted it. So let's go back to our home directory. As we can see here, my public HTML is back and everything is still intact. This is one of the easiest ways to restore content and that's why I always recommend people not choosing the selection for permanently delete the files because you never know when you might need something. Now that you know how to restore, let me show you how to create files and folders inside of your server. If we notice the top bars up here, we have a lot of options for File Manager. The first thing I want to show you is how to create a new file or a new folder. Let's click the plus sign next to File. And now it's going to ask us what name we want to call the new file. I'm going to call this one test.html. As you can see, it's going to be created in your current directory. If you'd like to specify a different directory, you can type it out here. But let's go ahead and click Create New File. Now as we can see, I've got test.html down here. Now let me show you how we can edit this file if we want to. Let's click on it, and as you can see, a bunch of options highlight up here in the top navigation bar. Now what we can do is we can rename the file if we want to, or we can edit this file. You can also view the file, change the permissions, and if it's an HTML file, you can use the HTML editor here as well. You can also compress it if it's a large file or a bunch of folders and files, you can compress it into a zip file. But let me show you how to edit this file real quick. Let's click on edit. It's always gonna prompt you to back up the original file before making any changes, but since it's a brand new file, we can go ahead and click edit. And this takes you to inside of the file. So now if we wanted to, we could start typing out all of our content here. I'm just going to put hi, click on save changes. Green success bar means we are good. And we can click close. Now I've got content inside of that file. I can right click it too to get the same exact options. And let's click on view. 
As you can see, there's the content that I put inside of that file. We can click this little tiny X to get out of it. Let's right click again and I'll show you some more of those options. These are very similar to the ones that you'll see up in this top bar. Now let's say I want to take this file and download it directly to my workstation. If I wanted to do that, all I do is click on download. And in just a few moments, download dialog box pops up at the bottom and that's downloaded directly to my downloads folder on my desktop. Pretty simple stuff. Now let's say that I've got a file that's on my workstation that I want to upload to my server. We can click on the upload section here. And this takes me directly to the file upload page. I can start dragging and dropping files here if I want to, or I can start selecting the files from my desktop right away by clicking the select file button here. Once I click that, it's going to take me to my workstation in a file explorer. I can choose the files that I want to upload, click open. The green success bar means it's been uploaded successfully, and I can click here to go back to my file manager. Now it's important to note that there's a 500 MB limit for uploads directly through file manager. So if you have a lot of content, it's always a good idea to use FTP. And we've got a bunch of great videos online about how to do that as well. So let's click go back. Now, as we can see, I've got my site.html, which is the file that I just uploaded. And I've got test.html, which is the file that I created earlier. It works very much in the same way. If I want to create a new folder, we can click on the plus sign here, just call it new folder and click create. Now I've got the folder that I created, the file that I created, and also the file that I uploaded directly to my file manager. All these things can be done inside of the system and it's really easy to do. The next thing I want to do is show you how to make a copy or a backup of a file. Let's say that I want to make a backup of my site.html before I make any changes. What we can do here is click on the file, click on copy, and it's all it's going to do is ask you to choose the location and the name of where you'd like to save this file. So I'll do a forward slash here on public HTML. I'm going to call it my site.html.backup. Once I've got that full path listed out, I'll go ahead and click copy files. As you can see, I've got my site.html and my site.html.backup. Really easy way to take a backup of a file just in case something happens. And that's basically it for File Manager. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks, y'all.